Hi there. Today we're going to discuss neck knives. I first became interested in neck knives after reading an article by Bob Casper, the renowned expert in uh, a combat knives annual many years ago. Bob pointed out that neck knives seem to be the coming trend in combative cutlery and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the type. The knives Bob discussed from makers such as Neely, Polkowski and Crawford certainly seem to be little gems. And I decided to get hold of one sometime and start working with it. A few weeks later, I was in South Africa presenting um, some courses and as usual, I spent some time in Springbok Arms, the local gun store. And there they had for sale, it had just been um, released, was a design from Columbia River called the Stiff Kiss, which was uh, a neck knife. And it was very inexpensive, it was about 20 pounds. And... Uh, which compared very, very favourably with some of the knives that have been discussed in the article, who were quite expensive custom items. So uh, I decided to buy it and, uh, and to um, have a look at how it's used and, and how you can integrate it into your uh, particular uh, self-protection system. Uh, and this is it. This is the Stiff Kiss. Now, as you'll notice, the handle is cord wrapped and it actually comes a skeletonized handle. And um, one of the guys who was working in Springbok Arms at the time, Les Van Blerk, was a former member of the Rhodesian SAS and the South African uh, Reconnaissance Commandos, a very knowledgeable chap, and he said, would you like me to wrap the handle for you? So I said, yeah, sure. So he, he put it in a, a vise with padded jaws and uh, spent quite a bit of time wrapping it. And all these years later, it's still secure and it, it, it's a very nice grip. The actual sheath has many, many uh, carriage options. As you, you, you may see there, there's a clip. So you can clip it to... Um, your belt, waistband, or to web gear. There's numerous slots and holes where you can use zip ties and lace it into equipment. And of course, as designed, the chain, the neck chain uh, for neck use. Oh, and by the way, that clip is reversible, so you can have it uh, multiple ways. So. A very very adaptable piece of equipment and um, decent blade tanto design serrations on it and uh, so on Ed Halligan design and um, Columbia River uh, that, that this is my first experience of them and uh, I later went on to acquire quite a few different ones because Columbia River uh, specialized in producing very economical versions of uh, custom knives and they do it very very well if we consider self-protection weapons from the point of view of accessibility we have a three level approach the primary weapon should be quick to access with the master hand and Obviously, due consideration should be given to presenting with a support hand too. The backup we weapon should be virtually as fast as the primary, but carried on the opposite side to be, side, to be accessed if pinned down on, say, for argument's sake, you're right-handed. If you're pinned down on your right-hand side, it's very hard to access the weapon. So your primary could be uh, a handgun, your backup could be um, a left-hand knife for weapon retention, for example, uh, something like the Casper TDI. And then finally, you have the hideout weapon. It's a deep reserve. 
to be used if disarmed of the other weapons. Access is slow because concealment is the main attribute. The neck knife is in the category of a hideout weapon. It's somewhat analogous to the ankle holster for um, a small pistol. On my next trip to Joburg, Springbok Arms again, and um, Columbia River had released another knife, another neck knife called the Bear Claw, and a, a Russ Comma design. And I liked it because uh, it's a curved blade, and at the time I was carrying a Spider Crow Civilian as my main knife. And uh, I thought having a curved blade. Um, as the hideout weapon would be uh, very, very appropriate. And this is the bear claw. Like the uh, stiff case, it's got numerous mounting options. There's the clip and so on. And I've still got the box upstairs where it's got all the different um, little uh, accessories you get. Um, for example, you can use a neck chain. Uh, I put this fob on because it just helps locate the knife. It's, uh, I say it's a curved blade and it's got the finger hole and it locks it to the hand. Now, I like this feature, I, li I like it. And obviously it's a feature that's similar to the one used in the hideaway knife. What it does, is it's very very difficult to disarm because everything is aggressive there's no disarm points there's nothing sticking out for someone to disarm the whole um, hilt is deep within the fist even with a small hand and uh, it locks very tightly there and then you can go to work with the, the, the curved blade now I have seen people mention the fact that it's possible to damage your finger, uh, whether from striking a, a hard target or uh, in a rough and tumble or a fall or whatever, your fingers through that hole and it's, it's possible to get a, a, a fracture or a degloving of the finger. Um, it, it, it's certainly something to think about, um, but it's something I haven't really ever worried about. Now, just as a bit of a sidebar, I was a member of a couple of knife forums and uh, they were discussing the Columbia River knives, specifically the Bear Claw. It's made out of a steel called AUS-6M and the consensus amongst the uh, experts was that it was a pretty rubbish steel, a uh, little better than if it had been made out of... Um, reconstituted uh, beer cans and um, you know they, they sort of um, wept that it wasn't made out of something better and not knowing anything really about steel uh, my opinion was well I'm using it or the postulated use of it would be for a last ditch um, self-protection weapon to uh, aid your escape from a situation. And, you know, if, if it only works once, if it only allows you to do that once, it, the knife doesn't owe you anything. And uh, it's very, very unlikely to let you down in, in just one use, even if it's an extended use. That was my opinion, and I was quite happy um, with it. However, sometime later, a chap wrote um, a piece on the forum and he said he had um, decided to remove the scales of the um, knife which are rather thick and to replace them with something else and to do that he needed to drill uh, a couple more holes for screws and um, he found it was very difficult to to drill through this uh, steel it was very hard it was impressive so he thought well it's it's supposed to be rubbish so he um, then tested the edge 
and what he did was do um, tests on a standard cutting medium, probably rope, I can't remember. I've got the original notes somewhere uh, on this computer, but uh, very difficult to access now, uh, until the knife lost its edge. And it, it was multiple, multiple, multiple strokes before it did that. Kept the edge a long time. He then resharpened it. It took an edge well, and he did it again. He did many cycles of this and came to the conclusion that it was decent steel. Um, certainly well suitable for its intended purpose. So even though you may think ATS-34, ATS-55 is, is much better, it seems to me that uh, Columbia River weren't really cheating us or offering products on the cheap. They're decent products. Now, I was carrying folders uh, quite a bit at this time, and um, I noticed that there was a particular sheath offered which took um, the folding knife, and it was offered by Mike Sastre. Now, I've talked about this when I talked about this particular knife, the uh, Harpy, and uh, Mike was heavily into white water rafting and canoeing and uh, you need a knife available for cutting if you get tangled up in things and line nets whatever uh, weed uh, but you don't want a knife that will puncture your buoyancy aid or the, um, uh, the rubber boat so uh, a folder is ideal for that so he came up with the idea of carrying um, the harpy, which is a stainless steel knife, and um, having it in in a, it's called a concealex, which is a type of kydex, I think, or carbon fiber. Uh, and uh, Mike sent me one, and uh, I played with it, and uh, I, I did carry this knife uh, for extended periods. And there was one um, time where it was never off my body, even in the shower. And uh, I, I found it worked well. It's like almost any of the uh, carriage things. At first, it, you notice it's uncomfortable and so on. I remember my first inside uh, internal fit holster I bought uh, down at Bisley uh, from a chap called Bruce Stevens. He copied the Mill Sparks design, did it very, very well. It was nice. Bought it. I actually bought his personal holster. He didn't have any of his. He used to make them kind of one at a time. And uh, on on the long drive back, it was winter and all the roads were. We had diversions. It took a long time to get back. And by that time, I was totally comfortable uh, with the um, the internal fit. And it's the same for things like neck knives. You get used to them. Access technique considerations. Although the neck chain is a good method of concealing the knife, it does present a couple of potential problems. Firstly, because the knife's hidden below clothing, uh, access uh, may be difficult, particularly um, if you're wearing multiple layers. So you've got to practice clearing the specific garments that you, you wear. You may be wearing a t-shirt. You may be wearing uh, a suit, shirt and tie. You may be wearing winter clothing with an overcoat over a jacket, over a uh, a heavy sweater buttoned up uh, have you practiced accessing in those conditions with your, your fingers um, numb from the cold another thing is the sheath
can twist due to violent movement. And as you go to access the knife, you're, you're holding it the wrong way. Instead of that way, it's that way. Now, this, this knife has a clip on it. And what you can do is clip a fold of your shirt or your t-shirt into that and uh, it will stop it um, twisting. Uh, you, another solution, I've never done it, is to put uh, a spacer bar there. Just get a, a bit of scrap Kydex or whatever and uh, make one. The technique I teach to access the neck knife is a three step process designed to give a fundamental skill. And Larry from the Gutter Fighters demonstrated it. So, first of all, is the garment clearance. And then, what we do is bring the hand in and pin the knife to your chest. This stops it twisting and so on. Next, you do an aggressive forward lean and at the same time bringing the, the hand that's grasped the garment up in what Masai Yub calls the Drac Dracula's cloak technique where this is a shield keeping your opponent away and by aggressively leaning the knife clears the body. Now if, you're, if, if you've got um, a bodybuilder physique with big pecs the knife will be in there. It's difficult to to um, to grasp. Uh, similarly, if you're fat and you've got man boobs, uh, same problem. But if you lean forward, the knife swings forward, and your hat, you've got your hand on it, gives you that gap, and you can grab it. Then pull into the um, high retention position, and then you can go to work. So that's the little sequence. Not difficult. And obviously then you've got to practice all things where you're sitting, lying, uh, in a vehicle, whatever. You know, it's not always going to be perfect. That's just the, the basic concept of it. Speed. It's never going to be fast. It's not a quick draw system. It's a hideout system. Um, there are much faster options. Uh, a push dagger in a belt sheath is going to be in your hand much much quicker. Um, so build your tactics around uh, and your level of um, alertness so you can see a problem, you can access it um, in a precautionary way. Uh, but at the end of the day, you, you must be able to... Um, carry out in-fight access which is the difficult one where you're being aggressed and the stress level's high we've had a lot of people on courses turn up with neck knives and um, you know they've sat practicing the technique while they're watching the TV or something but as soon as you put a little bit of stress on um, then the technique falls apart There are alternatives. Craig Douglas, Southnark, designed the Little Loco as a highline option. Without it being a neck knife, it, it, it clips to, to your uh, clothing buttons. And what it means is that if someone straddled your waist and you can't access uh, weapons on the waistline, you've always got something on the high line. And it's, it's um, a good alternative. Bob Caspers pointed out that um, neck knives can be uh, hung in convenient locations such as behind the front door, um, from the vehicle steering column, etc. Um, you know, wherever in your environment or workspace that you, you need it. Now, there's another thing that there are knives now 
that come with what's called a ripcord system. This this is one that uh, I picked up in the United States, the Obake. Uh, it's another Columbia River uh, design. Now, you know, they don't pay me. It's just I happen to, they design knives I like. This is um, very much a Japanese influenced design. Uh, and it uses the ripcord. This goes around your belt and the knife's within the waistband and as you draw it, the reach is full extension and the sheath falls away. But what you can do is just undo this, take that off and put a neck chain on and you've got a neck knife and it's just, just as good. And most of the knives that um, are offered as, uh, as ripcord knives, like this one, um, this is a very, very aggressive design, du uh, double sharp edged, uh, which you can use as a neck knife. And you've got the finger hole, which I like, locks to the hand again. Uh, a knife, going back to the original article, uh, Bob Casper, that uh, he praised was by Al Pukowski. And uh, in Stockholm, Mika, uh, our late great friend, uh, presented me with one. And uh, it's one that I certainly treasure. Um, and another knife that I really like a lot was sent to me. Um, and it's this one by uh, Fred Perrin, the uh, noted French designer. And it's... Uh, absolutely beautiful design uh, the handle it, it's contoured and it's uh, very similar to the bear claw in in, in, in design but uh, it's a very elegant uh, iteration of it um, he calls it la griff and he's been made it came out probably the same time as the bear claw but i don't don't think that anybody copied anyone in it it's uh, it's a spontaneous design, but I, I really enjoy that. Then, of course, this was a wartime design, which was for um, cutting the valves away from tyres on um, German motor vehicles uh, used by the resistance. But um, you can use it as a neck knife. And then, of course... Or, um, one of my particular favourites is the hideaway. Now this isn't a neck sheath. I, I do have neck sheaths for them, but the hideaway, um, brilliant design, locks onto the hand, etc. And it's got so many carriage options. One of which is the um, the neck option. Now. Suspension systems. A lot of people talk about using paracord. Uh, paracord uh, is soft around the neck and uh, it's very comfortable to wear. And uh, I've heard people complain that the neck chains uh, pinch the hairs on your neck. Now, I, I've been wearing at least one neck chain, usually two, for many, many years, uh, not with knives on. And um, I've never had that problem at all. But if, if you do, then you do. Um, but it has been pointed out that Paracord 550 braking strain can be a garrot around your neck. Um, so you can get a breakaway um, a connector. Uh, so best of both worlds, it's comfortable, but it's not gonna allow you to get strangled. In another knife shop in uh, Joburg in Santon, um, Sharp Edge, they, they really did have great knives in there. But one of the things they, they had was a sheath that accepted uh, a, fol a folder in its open position. 
and the, the one it was designed for was the Spyderco Military, which I didn't own, so I never bought one of these. I later found out they did offer them for the civilian, and I would have liked to have picked one of them up. Um, so it's an option. Now, it may be the best of both worlds, or it may be the worst of both worlds, depending on your outlook, but it's an option. There is a variation to the neck knife for people who wear um, bulletproofs, who wear body armor, particularly concealed body armor. It usually has a, a pouch on the front to accept a plate and you can put a knife in there. Uh, that's your hideout knife. Um, this is a concept that was espoused by Daryl Bulky. Um, uh, he was telling us about the knife he designed the DB was produced by Strider. It's a tough, very uh, aggressive stabbing weapon. And uh, he used to carry it in that pouch there. So that's another option. Note on training. You should practice using your live blade, access, accessing and using it in live cutting, using a, a cutting target. Now, in a future video, I'm going to talk about this uh, task orientated knife training, uh, how you do that. Also, how you set up training drills with a partner using obviously a training knife. And there are quite a few that um, the hideaway has a training version and uh, Fred's La Griff also has a safe training version which you can use with a partner. So it, it's essential to have these safe trainers because you need to train in scenario work with an aggressive human partner who is using his, his mind against yours and uh, can really put you under pressure. So uh, as I'll address that in a future video. Some final thoughts. Uh, personally, I've mainly only had extensive experience with the harpy, the folder. Um, I, I get the impression now that neck knives are not as popular as they used to be. Um, there are many other new and innovative carry options out there. Um, for hideout knives and so on, uh, but they do fulfill a niche, they do fulfill um, some uh, requirements. It may not be for you, but it may be for someone else. Uh, and if it fulfills your particular needs, then by all means go for it. Uh, as I say, it's essential to train uh, in relevant skills uh, to be totally conversant with it and to integrate it with your primary and backup weapons as well. Um, I haven't addressed the non-self-protection uh, applications. People use this for camping, for work-related things. Uh, fine, that's certainly, um, certainly a very valid reason to carry it. Uh, it means you've always got your knife with you. As I say, Mike Sastry used to do it for boating and so on. So it could be a dual purpose thing. So I hope this um, gives you an overview of what neck knives uh, are about. I'll put links to some of the uh, models that I've discussed. Enjoy. Enjoy.